Right, guys, welcome back to another episode in the uh, React series. My name is Ben Cardle, and if this is your first time to the channel, thank you for joining us. Thank you for subscribing, if you do at all. Um, it will cost you nothing, and in the year we're having, decent freebies are, are always a winner. So make sure you uh, you click that button, and uh, if nothing else, you'll make a hairy man very happy. Um, but yeah, in this week's episode, we're looking at the um, the follow up to the whole uh, J D A H incidents <laughs> um, that were going on. I did a couple of videos on each of their uh, deposition footage so if you haven't seen those yet make sure you go back um, and track those first so you know what I'm on about um, basically um, it seems that a number of you enjoyed them spoke to a number of lovely people on Twitter um, as well uh, regarding the videos and they've sent me in a, a few clips for follow-ups follow-ups but I've also done um, my additional research as well. Few of the points that that came out of this. Uh, so let's let's address first of all the biggest one. Um, they are they are celebrities. So how much as we of as the ignorant public, how much are we going to be allowed to know? The in terms of details, the reality is. Not a great deal, because uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't directly um, doesn't directly affect us. It indirectly uh, affects us uh, when you look at our backgrounds, uh, our affinities, and our moral standing. Sure, but not a direct causal link based upon our relationships. So we're only allowed to know so much. That is true. But what we're talking about here is the the decoding of somebody's verbal and non-verbal um, displays, their arrangements, their congruence, their tells, to use the buzzword. And from that, we can gain a considerable level of insight into somebody's behavioral makeup, regardless of whether they are an international megastar or the person who works behind the checkout down the road. Reading people, at least in my opinion, is the ultimate people skill, the ultimate transferable skill. Because at the end of the day, you gain such uh, a valuable insight into somebody's character, their thoughts, their likes, their dislikes, preferences, hobbies, work, feelings, patterns of behavior, anything. And this information can be used for the betterment of the relationships uh, that you're looking to develop with them or for the understanding of the relationships they have with the people and things around them, right? So each uh, stronger character and stronger display will leave what I have always referred to as uh, as behavioural residue uh, that we can use to reason out information. That's why I'm very conscious through the watching of these videos that you understand context, right? So in every observation that we make, I try and argue both sides, right? It's just that if we're ever going to come to as close to um, certain as we can be about one point, there will be more arguments for this point than there will be against it, right? So I would look to actively encourage as unbiased a read as possible in order to get to the truth of any given situation. The greatest context I can give you is um, even if you aren't a parent, imagine you are, right? Imagine you are. Could you read uh, a, a sex offender sat in front of you honestly and truthfully without your own personal biases coming across that's what we're looking to do right because the topics here and the people involved are, are going to give you quite sort of 
um, incendiary opinions. People will be prone to uh, emotional reactions one way or the other. So we're looking to quash that and just focus on what we can observe and the truth that we can reason out accordingly, right? Uh, I, I, I don't have I don't have a dog in this fight uh, in terms of um, I don't gain anything uh, from this other than conversations with some fairly decent people um, so my opinions uh, and my beliefs that I reason from what I have seen and read come from a place of these number of observations support this belief whereas and as is the case here an infinitely less number um, disagree with them right and uh, a few people have mentioned um, uh, drugs and alcohol that may or may not have been uh, abused in relation to behavioral outbursts so if you um, if you think of that nature of behavioral residue, again, it will leave traces in your character, traces that reading a person can bring out. Yeah? So if you look at some of the traits of, um, let's just call it anger management concerns, because that can, that can uh, explode out into other, into other facets, right? So you look at um, becoming angry or violent when you're consuming one of the substances that you're consuming be it alcohol or drugs you know there's a lack of there's a lack of compromise to the arguments that you have there's a lack of um, uh, emotional expression in uh, what would be called a healthy way there is um, uh, outward aggression lots of overt shouting swearing uh, uninhibited angry responses to low-key situations substance abuse um, is is one of those things but there are a, a certain level of uh, poor behavioral traits that will be repeated which will lead to a certain degree of self-loathing right which on the one hand could be argued for anger management but on the other could be argued towards um, uh, depression victim syndrome and the like there are, there are a couple of others I think it's called um, narcissistic victim syndrome um, but don't quote me on that one I'm, I'm only going off memory I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure um, but if you look at the flip side I found a couple of articles on uh, you can go to Google Scholar and um, find the uh, the veracity of these argue uh, of these articles yourself but if you look at some of the tactics that are employed along the lines of verbal abuse, manipulation, emotional blackmail, gaslighting, competition, negative contrasting, um, sabotage, uh, objectification, lying would be the obvious one, um, neglect, invasion of privacy, character assassination, violence, finance, financial abuse, and uh, the big one is, is isolation, right? These are some of the traits that can allow us to reverse engineer. Uh, it is probably the more widely known word if you're looking at the uh, the Charles Sanders Pierce approach to uh, um, logical reasoning and pragmatism. It's known as abductive reasoning, reasoning backwards. And I won't go into the uh, the Sherlock Holmes quote, <laughs> um, but I should because it's there. Um, and yeah, so we can find aspects of that in in uh in well in both of them because one of them uh, and i'm only speaking for myself uh jd is is does have the victim syndrome signs and um the other does have the uh the abusive signs but there's a high level of inhibition to their responses and um Another person, I think this was only one that I saw. Uh, bear in mind, there have been a few hundred um, uh, on both. So uh, if I've missed it, you'll have to forgive me. But there, there was one person that commented um, regarding his, his, um, his alcohol and substance abuse that can lead to 
levels of, of domestic violence, which again would leave behavioral traits regarding the come down, which is why you can't see them because they're not there. And another, it would depend by and large on precisely what's being taken. If you look at um, alcohol abuse, for example, you get, um, um, you get appetite suppression and deficiencies, skin problems, uh, impotence, um, uh, liver damage would be an obvious one. And uh, there's a certain level of, of central nervous system damage that comes in response to that. But if you look at some of the more um, popular, <laughs> it's probably the wrong word to use, um, popular, popular drugs that are used, uh, something like meth, um, you get levels of um, uh, euphoria and the increased um, uh, heart rate and respiratory system effects that are there. Blood pressure goes up, um, insomnia, uh, um, irritability, uh, anxiety. Um, it can also really damage your blood vessels, which can lead to things like strokes uh, and the like. Uh, cocaine, violent, irrational, paranoid behavior. Um, it's linked to certain levels of hallucinogens. Um, anxiety and depression uh, is another one as well because of that increased state that comes out of it. Um, there is something that's known as, I believe it's just known as cocaine psychosis, and that is a sense of um, losing touch with what would be considered reality, family, friends, um, and the like. But you can see the bleed over into things like isolation and why abusers can successfully blame this side of things because they're, they have such a, an intermingled uh, response um, hallucinogens um, right the way across the board you know depending upon what you're hallucinating is going to lead to a certain level of behavior um, weed marijuana um, it, it affects the testosterone levels for men um, there's a diminished or, or, a, or at least a very a, a lack of interest in um, uh, sexual gratification um, and the like and uh, it, with it being such uh, with it having rather such a knock-on effect in terms of your um, psychological state that becomes a dependence upon this in order to maintain some level of of, uh, of stasis of of um, normalcy so on with the um, on with the analysis right we've been into this for a while I looked for a grand total of 19 hours and 33 minutes. I'll try and put up a little screenshot of, uh, of my stopwatch that I have for when I'm working from home so we can do timesheets and the like. Um, I looked for 19 hours and 33 minutes for um, behavioral residue of signs of um, inhibited anger. Um, of signs of narcissistic personality disorders, of signs of um, when, when they were together, of signs of um, uh, hostility, anger, controlling the, the behavioral traits that are related to a certain level of gaslighting, that negative contrasting that goes on where you downplay somebody else in order to make yourself feel better and I, I, I couldn't find any. That's not to say that it might not be there. I don't believe it's there, but that's not to say it's, it's only 19 hours. Um, but I couldn't find any in JD. I, I, at all, right? In if you look, I mean, you could argue that I'm, uh, uh, I'm biasing myself cognitively trying to, um, come up with a level of changed blindness, right? 
Um, there are there are a certain number of other things that I've spotted regarding uh, increased levels of alcohol abuse rather than drug abuse, um, and where this time frame changes. But the affects that it has on his behaviour aren't there, right? Which, if you are going to um, domestically abuse someone, they would be there. Uh, even in the minutiae, even in controlled responses, even in something that's trying to be hidden, right? These are knee-jerk responses that you have because you are this thing. And I couldn't find any of that for him anywhere, right? When you when you watch a video, you you make you make a note, you ration out, you, uh, you rationalize out your observations, you develop your information, and then you see what it says. You try and find ways of disproving it to therefore inexorably prove it. And I couldn't find any traits that that link back to his. Uh, him being this at all um, what you can see is um, honesty um, a, a genuine nature to his to his interest in things right if you ever watch how he talks to grown-ups versus how he talks to children there is uh, there is a level of comfort and joy um, that, that children bring him. Um, I would imagine that's why he spent so much time uh, dressing up and, and going around the various hospitals that he did. Um, but this is all recorded as a moment of uh, honest responses. They're knee-jerk. They happen um, reflexively, right? There was no control, there's no in inhibitions, um, inhibited behavior, rather, uh, to these displays that he's showing. Yes, he's got the outward signs of somebody who is abusing uh, certain things, but right, you can just as easily, based upon the limited information that we have, so from our standpoint as the ignorant public, Bear with me, that's the door. Hey. <laughs> Where was I? So you can just as easily, from our standpoint as the ignorant public, um, read those details as somebody looking for escapism down to mental health concerns you know we've we've all known um of someone or we all know someone directly that's had uh mental health concerns depression anxiety and the like and how often that leads to um uh i believe the colloquialism is eating your feelings <laughs> Um, we've all been there to a certain level, right? To have that uh, influx of uh, hormone release that will temporarily make us feel better. The dependency um, that comes out of that is what is therefore known as abuse. But the long and short of it is, I couldn't find any. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't find any. So I didn't. I didn't feel that it was relevant to show you videos of this not existing. So it could be argued then that this then turns into a mudslinging event because it, it could appear to be very one-sided and that's not my intention at all. I did my due diligence by both, um, by both um, parties in terms of trying to bring as honest and as honest um, of an analysis as I possibly could for what my two pence is worth anyway and I, I, I couldn't find any but when you look at the other side you find 
um, high levels of control, high levels of perceived threat from those that she deems better than her, high levels of um, of impeded uh, angry responses, high levels of um, arrogance, high levels of negative contrasting. Mm -hmm.